epsilon and a n is lying somewhere inside yeah? but now here somewhere is lying b n and b n and we have also two epsilons here and so so if we add these things together then a plus b will be somewhere here and like the distance of a n plus b b n can be at least at most twice as big because we can have one epsilon for here if if the distance would be would be large if a n would be almost here then we would obtain big distance and we can have also another epsilon for here so we can we get slightly larger neighborhood around this thing is is of size four epsilon but we surely know that a n plus b n lies inside. So this is this is just some kind of, of basic basic statement for this. Okay, so what we just need is to use these these things that that limits of, of a n and b n exist. Yeah, so so we these these things will, will be used to to, um, to prove the consequence. And so, so what does it mean that the limit exists? We can we can imagine it as some kind of programming, programming thing that it, you have some kind of of, um, of box. So so if the limit of a n is equal a, we can imagine that you have some kind of black box. We don't really know how how it works, but the black box. Um, let me denote it uh, a n a n black box. How it works? You put inside your epsilon and out from this box, you will obtain a zero, which satisfies then for for this epsilon here, for every n at least a zero distance of of a n and a is at most epsilon. Yeah, so so you have this black box, and if if the limit exists, you know that for every epsilon there exists some finite answer. And now let me let me visualize the proof. So so the idea is that we would like to construct some huge box, like like some kind of of circuit, and this box will be for a n plus p n. So for addition of of these two these two sequences. So input to this box is some epsilon. Yeah? So we take two smaller boxes which are representing a n and b n and we enter the epsilon there. So we put put this we copy these two epsilons and put them as, as input for a n and, and b n. So what we know that we will obtain some some n n zero a and some n zero p, yeah? and so we have two two different numbers. So so if I if I draw it, so I have um, here is here, here is sequence a n, and after it's going to to some value a, but like at first it can have some some. S some jumps like this, so if, if the epsilon is, is small like this, the, the n0, n0, a can be here. And for example, b can, b can behave, I don't know, nicely, so it can have just, just value like this. So it always is in size, and the n0, n0, b will be at the start. Yeah, so now we, we add these two things together, and the idea is that if we add them together, then this this the maximum of, of these two these two quantities maximum of n zero a and n zero b will somehow work that this will be very close to a plus b but the, but it will be like the distance will be will be the the gap between between this it's not on the picture actually visible but the gap will be slightly bigger so here it was here it was epsilon and now we have we have like the gap was two epsilon so now we have four epsilon so the gap is, is twice as big yeah, but but it's it's actually not so big problem because what we can do is to is to put this epsilon here actually smaller than this this input epsilon so we can can take epsilon half 
Yeah. Now we we have n zero for epsilon half, n zero for epsilon half. If we if we take maximum of of these two, then we output this maximum, and it will work for for the input epsilon. So uh, if you just take this take this uh, this picture proof and and you just just verify that, that everything is satisfied. You can can write it down formally, and it it will always work. But but this is the idea hidden hidden behind it. Yeah. So so we can we can uh, like this is uh, just just some kind of proof, and you can do very similar proofs for for the other cases of of the theorem. But you just have to be more clever how to how to choose these these values of epsilon. But basically, what you can do is to is to run it. You will obtain some some function of the epsilon, I don't know, eps, uh, two epsilon square or or five epsilon or whatever, and then just use the operation on the epsilon to to make this make this real epsilon. Yeah. So so in this case, we obtained two epsilons when epsilon would put here. So we just we just uh, input half of it to have the have the correct statement but, but it's just some kind of very very simple formal formal reasoning okay so so this is this is the arithmetic of of the of the sequence of the of the um, limits so why why does it imply imply that that thing uh, yeah maybe maybe one more one more point to that thing this this is only implication if these two things do not exist. We cannot say anything about about uh, this sum. And also, what's important, it's implication meaning from one side only. It does not work in the opposite way. Okay. So you cannot do that. that you're working on, on some some task, and you have here two things. So Addition of of two two things, so so you will split them to to two limits. Now you calculate one of these quantity and saying okay, it does not exist. So so everything is wrong, and this thing does not exist too. No, it it just means that you don't know anything. The point can be that this thing exists, but this splitting here was incorrect. So you haven't haven't um, received any any anything interesting. Yeah, so so uh, these these things uh, sometimes you can have even even like like infinities here, but you have to be really really careful about what you're calculating with. Yeah, so so for example, let me return to to that uh, to that task. It was um, yeah, n squared plus two n over n third plus uh, five. I think or something like that. It doesn't really matter. So what we cannot do here. Is to is to split it like this. Now this is easy. This is infinity over infinity. But we don't know what 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 is this number. We just know that this function is going to infinity. This sequence is going to infinity, and this one is going to infinity. But we want to compare them. How fast they are going there. We don't receive any uh, any answer from this. So so this is this is completely wrong thing. We cannot approach it like this. But but what we can do is to is to slightly slightly modify modify the function. So for example, what we can do is to is to put and and squared and um, and and put put this this nominator here to uh, to parentheses. So so I can like like put n square out of out of it so out of the nominator. So what I will have here is one plus two over over n. Yeah, and I can do similar thing with the denominator. I can put n square out of the denominator. Yeah, so I will have n squared plus n fourth, uh, sorry, n, n, n squared again, plus 5 over n squared. Think like this. Now, these two things reduce each other. So, so what, what I have is something much simpler. Huh? And uh, and now I can use the, the previous approach with splitting these things to two different limits. Yeah, so so what what I can do here is to to calculate limit of one over 
1 plus 2 over n over limit of n squared plus 5 over n squared and so this thing here this is going to this this can be can be this this denominator can be can be split again to to limit of 1 plus limit of 2 over n and this thing here is clearly going to 0 and this is going to 1 so so this is equal 1 and this thing here is going to infinity and this is going to 0 so this whole thing is infinity so the limit is 0 yeah so we can do we can use things things like this but but we, we have to avoid avoid these these bad things so if you think about this for a while you can you can even generalize this for any two any two polynomials yeah so what what we can do is to calculate limit of, of px over qx yeah so uh, as we as it's it's not so not so difficult to see that the limit will always exist, and what we will care about are only the the largest largest terms in in each polynomial. Yeah, so so, but p x is equal a n to q n plus something, and let q x is equal b m to xm plus plus something here yeah so we don't really care what 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 things are here about so so this will be this will be our our theorem so it'll be limit of of px over qx theorem limit of of uh, of fraction of, of two polynomials yeah? so so for um yeah maybe maybe i should i should uh, for x is going to going to infinity yeah so so something something like this so what what we can do is to just take a look at, at these two things and so we will we will obtain you will obtain the following characterization that this limit can be either zero or some constant which which I write in in a second so so that so it's very it's const or it can be plus or minus infinity which also do depend on the, on the value of the constant. So, so what does it mean zero? Zero means that q is much faster than p. Yes. So, uh, if if these if these terms would be would be exactly the same, the the n would be equal m, then then they would be growing growing of of similar similarly fast. But uh, if q is growing faster, it means that m is larger than n. Yeah. And we don't really care whether it's go whether uh, what are the values of a n and b m in this case. It can go to to uh, plus or minus infinity, meaning that p q is going p x is going much faster to infinity than q x. Yeah. So um, so in this case, what we know is that m is, is smaller than n, and then the value is is a n over b n bm times the infinity yeah? so it depends on on this on these constants but only only whether whether they are positive or, or negative yeah? so and the, the last case is that it that these these things are exactly exactly the same and in such a case we are going to to constant which is equal a n over b n yeah? in the case m equal n. And so, so this is this is the the theorem we would like to we would like to prove here. Okay, and so uh, and the the proof is actually exactly the same as as before. We are just going to to this to to put these these terms out of out of denominator and denominator, then cancel them and. And then, uh, then just take take the rest. So so, let me let me show you the first two cases, and you can you can think think about about the the last case. So so, first thing what we do we take uh, we take minimum of uh, okay we are uh, okay. So so for the, uh, let's okay uh, proof proof of of this thing is is okay. So let let me denote this this case number one. So for the case number one, 
what what we know is that the denominator is much bigger. So what we are going to do is we have limit. Uh, 